Hey everyone, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at vertex groups and weight painting and several ways that this information can be used in Blender. So let's get into it. Vertex groups are a way to store sets of values on each vertex. This value ranges from 0 to 1. The value can be used to drive modifiers, armatures, certain properties of physics simulations like pinning of vertices and cloth simulations. There are certain settings in particle simulations they can control, and they can also be used as attributes in a geometry node tree, which means it can power a load of other things. So to get started, we're going to add some loop cuts to our default cube in each direction. The most straightforward way of interacting with vertex weights is in the Object Properties tab under Vertex Groups. This is where we can add our groups. You just need to click the plus sign to add one. This will add an empty group. In edit mode on our object, select the vertices that we want to add a weight to. Use the slider to control how much weight we want to assign. For now, we'll just assign one. When we have the weight selected, click the assign button. This will now assign that weight to the selected vertices in the selected group. We can create a second group, select other vertices, and assign weights to those. Of course, right now we're not getting any visual feedback in the 3D viewport for our weights, but we can toggle an overlay for that. In the Overlays panel, while in Edit Mode, scroll down and choose Vertex Group Weights. Now we will see the selected vertex weights for the selected group. If we want to remove a vertex from a group, simply select it and press the Remove button. There are also tools for selecting and deselecting vertices in vertex groups. We can select all of the vertices in a group by pressing the select button. If we have lots of vertices already selected, we can deselect the ones that are in a given group. A new workspace that will be available in Blender 2.93 is the spreadsheet view. Here you'll be able to see a list of the vertices in the object and which ones have values assigned. Each vertice shows its position and its value for both group and group 001. Another way to edit vertex group values is with weight paint mode. You can choose weight paint mode from the mode menu in the top left hand corner. As its name implies, weight paint mode will allow you to paint values onto your mesh. You can choose which brush you want to use from this drop down. The easiest ones to use are add and subtract. The menus here across the top have many options for ways to control your brushes, but we're not going to go into those in this particular video. Now that we've created some groups, let's look at a few ways we can use them. The first use we'll look at is for controlling modifiers. Take the bevel modifier, for example. In the modifiers tab, we'll add a bevel modifier to our object. By default, it bevels all of the edges, limited by their angle. Instead, let's limit by vertex group. This is the vertex group selection icon. Any field with this icon allows you to select a vertex group for control. In this case, let's choose group 1. Going into edit mode, you'll recall that group 1 had weights along these top two corners. And so because of that, just those top two corners are being beveled. In most cases, where you have a vertex group available to be selected, you'll also have this double arrow button. This inverts the vertex group's influence. So where the values of the vertex group were 1, they're now 0, and vice versa. This will now bevel every edge except the ones that were selected. Other modifiers like Solidify use not only the presence of a weight to enable or disable the effect, but are also influenced by the amount. Another use for vertex groups is in physics settings. Here, we'll use the vertex group as a pin group for a cloth simulation. Similarly, we can control aspects of a particle simulation or hair system with groups. Used in conjunction with weight paint, this can make adding hair to certain parts of your model extremely easy. 
Finally, we'll want to take a look at how vertex groups interact with armatures. Here we have a subdivided cylinder. I'm going to add a three bone armature and set the viewport display mode to show the names of the bones. If you parent the cylinder to the armature, you'll get a list of parenting options. The three options we want to talk about are armature to form, armature to form with empty groups, and armature to form with automatic groups. Armature to form will simply create an armature modifier on the mesh, but will not affect any vertex groups. With empty groups, this will create a vertex group for each bone, but those groups will all have zero values for each bone. It's then up to you to assign weights to each group. Then last, with automatic weights, we'll create a group for each bone and assign weights based on bone proximity to that group. If you go to the modifier tab on the mesh, you'll see the armature modifier and that it's set to be bound to vertex groups. This means that a bone of a given name will influence the mesh based on the vertex group of the same name. Be aware that if a bone shares a name with a group and the bone is renamed, the group will automatically be renamed as well to stay in sync. However, this process does not work in reverse. If you rename a group that is being controlled by a bone, the bone will not be renamed and the connection between that bone and that group will be lost until you rename the group to be the same as the bone again. If you want to create a new armature for an object that already has vertex group assigned for bone movement, first make sure the groups are named the same as the bones that will control them. So in this case, if I created a new armature, I would need to make sure that my three bones are named bone, bone rename, and bone.002 before parenting my cylinder to this new armature. When I do parent it, I want to make sure I choose armature deform as the option, as this leaves the groups alone. At this point, the new armature bones will have influence over the mesh through the existing vertex groups. These are just a few of the ways you can use vertex groups. I hope this gives you some ideas of things to try and inspires you to make something awesome. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button. Also, make sure to subscribe to keep up to date with any new videos that I put out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.